Amen. Take your Bible and turn to Philippians this morning, Philippians chapter 1. We're going to read a few of these verses in uh, Philippians chapter 1 as we stand together to honor God's Word. Beginning in verse 3, the Apostle Paul wrote these words under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our Father, now we ask your Holy Spirit to draw us to your throne. We ask that you speak to our hearts in a very real way that we will know in these moments together before we take your supper and as we take your supper that we will be in your presence. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for each person here today. May you just let heaven come down and glory fill our souls. In the name of Jesus and the church said. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. It is a special church where the people and the pastor are able to minister together for a quarter of a century. That sounds like a long time. I feel old this morning. <laughs> but it's very humbling to me. And as I thought about verses that I could share with you on this day, uh, I do thank God upon every remembrance of you. That's how I feel in my heart. So what I want to do this morning before we share in the supper of our Lord is to uh, just talk to you about five life lessons I have learned in these 25 years. And I'm not going to give you anything profound this morning. This is very simple. But I think it's good to get back to basics sometimes. And if somebody were to say, Ed, what do you hang your hat on? What are the foundation principles of your life? These are five things that I would share. And here's the first one. God is faithful. Amen? God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I hope you'll underline those first three words, God is faithful. He's always faithful. We serve a faithful God. God has never made a promise that He did not keep. God has never said a word that is not true. God is faithful. The Sunday I came here to preach a trial sermon 25 years ago, I was sitting on this platform waiting to preach and looking out over the congregation, and I was praying for those who were here. And as I was praying, God spoke to my heart. And it was just as clear as if He had spoken to me in an audible voice. It was just in my spirit. It was a clear word from God. And God impressed upon my heart that day that He wanted to do a special work here in this church. And he put in my heart and my mind that day a vision of this church being filled with people. And as I look around today, all I can say is God is faithful. God is faithful. This church is a testimony to the faithfulness of God. Here's a second thing. If I could say, build your life on these principles, I would say Jesus is Lord. God is faithful, and Jesus is Lord. Look at this scripture in Philippians 2, 10 and 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and every tongue should confess, read it with me, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord. 
Jesus Christ is to be our focus. It's so easy for a pastor and for a church to get our eyes on secondary things. Not necessarily bad things, maybe even good things, but Jesus Christ must be our focus because Jesus Christ is Lord. He should be the focus of all of our hearts. Not too long ago, I bought one of these uh, loan stripers. You know what I'm talking about? A loan striper. It makes these, makes these stripes in your yard, and it looks really manicured if you know how to use it. And uh, I filled that thing up with sand, and I hooked it up behind my push mower. And I thought, man, I'm going to win the, I'm going to win the neighborhood award for the best looking yard. And I'd already mowed my yard, so I got this lawn striper. It's just a big roller, really, what it looks like, and hooked it up behind my, my lawn mower. Richard, you know what I'm talking about? This lawn striper, and uh, uh, so. I went row by row. The only thing is, when I finished, there were curves in it, and, <laughs> and it was crooked. I was talking to Mike one day, and he told me that what I needed to do was pick out a tree or something and put my eyes on that, and then just look at that, and I'd mow straight rows. And that's what I did, and it worked. I used it about twice. I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But the point is, we have to keep our eyes fastened on Jesus. Amen? Because Jesus is Lord of our life. People come to church for different reasons. Some people come to church for what they can get out of it. It's a consumer mentality. And people today actually shop around for churches to see what they can get out of it. Some people come to church to make uh, contacts with people, to network with people that will help them in their business to, to get ahead or to make more money. People go to church for different reasons, but there's only one reason that we're to go to church, because Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. That's the reason we exist here as a church. We exist to exalt Jesus and to worship Jesus. I want you to listen to me. It's not about buildings and budgets and programs and methods and size and personnel or preferences or personalities. Ladies and gentlemen, it must be about Jesus because Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of our life. And one day we're going to bow before him and we're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Number three, God is faithful, Jesus is Lord. Prayer is essential. Prayer is essential. Look at this verse or these verses in Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I am convinced that one of the reasons we have experienced so many blessings of God here is because this church is filled with prayer warriors. This church is filled with men and women who believe in prayer, and they get on their knees, and they pray. Time and time again, we have prayed for divine intervention, and we've witnessed God work because of prayer. We have to stay on our knees in prayer. Number four, the Bible is our guidebook. The Bible is our guidebook. Look at this verse in 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I have my mother and dad's Bibles. And often I open them and I see the pages of those Bibles that are worn and marked on and even stained with tears they raised us to believe the bible they raised us to believe the book the bible is our guidebook and we must simply teach it and preach it and live it as it is not add anything to it not take anything away from it 
It is the clear, inspired, perfect Word of God. It is without error. It is the living Word. The Bible is our guidebook. Can you say amen? And here's one more, and I'll save the best for last. Heaven is our home. Heaven is our home. Look at this verse in John 14. Jesus said in verse 2, In my Father's house are, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. You see, we get so wrapped up in this world, but folks, we're not going to be here forever. We're not going to be here long. We're just passing through. The thing is, probably all of us, there may be one or two or five, but most of us in this room right now will be gone in a hundred years. Most of us long before that. But we're not going to be here. Now, now we're going to live forever, either in heaven or in hell, depending upon whether we've accepted Christ or we've rejected Christ. And it's important to remember that heaven is our home. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm telling you, it's a wonderful thing to know that when you get to your, the end of your earthly life, that you're going to go to, to heaven if you know Jesus. And the Bible describes heaven as a place of no tears, a place of no trouble, a place of no trials, a place where there is no sorrow, a place of no pain, a place of no death, a place where God dwells, a place where we will see the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll be worth it all when we see Jesus. And one thing, should you die today, should I die today, should we leave this world before dark comes on this earth tonight, are you absolutely certain you would go to heaven? Are you certain that you would go to heaven? God loves you. God wants you to go to heaven. That's why He sent Jesus to die. And if you'll open your heart to Christ, it's like we learned in Bible school this week, the ABCs, if we admit that we have sinned, if we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God has raised Him from the dead, if we will confess that to the Lord Jesus, the Bible says what? We shall be saved. I'm asking you to do that this morning if you've not. I'm asking you not to leave this building today without knowing that heaven is settled in your heart and in your life. That you have peace about where you're going when you die. Because all of us are going to die. And God wants you to go to heaven. And He sent Jesus to forgive us. And if you'll accept Him today, He'll come into your heart and life. And you can know your sin's been forgiven. And that you're going to heaven. We're going to take the Lord's Supper. And after that, we're going to have an invitation. And invite those who would come to Christ and those who would join this church to do so this morning. Deacons, if you'll come. Here you go, Mike. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day you've given us and for all the many blessings. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your house this morning. And Lord, we thank you for the honor and privilege of sitting at your table this morning to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And Lord, we just thank you for the ultimate sacrifice you made of your Son that we would have a way into heaven. And Lord, as we take this bread, let us always be reminded of what it signifies, the broken body of Christ, broken for each of us. 
Lord, we love you. We praise you. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Stand. Father, we thank you for the blood that you spilled for us. And Father, we love you, and it's all about you, and we lift you up today, Father. We, we lay it all at your feet, and Father, again, it's all about you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now we're going to stand and sing, and as we sing this morning this song of invitation, I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus, to invite Him to be your Savior. If you'll do that this morning, our pastors will be here to receive you. We invite you to come. If you'd like to join the church this morning, we invite you to come and do that. If you need to come and pray, the altar is open for prayer. But primarily, if you don't know the Lord, This is the time to invite him into your life. You come.